everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm Ray Dunn from National University of Singapore. And I'm going to talk about the problem of aspect extraction for online reviews. Nowadays, you can easily find tens of reviews online about the product. There's just too much information there, so there is a need to organize those reviews into certain structured review summaries. For instance, here on the slide shows a possible review summary for a restaurant. In addition to the overall distribution of the restaurant, a user might be more interested to know what are the specific comments and ratings that other people made regarding to uh, things like food, staff, or ambience. Basically, we call things like food, staff, ambience the aspects of the restaurant, as they are the common attributes that users care about for a restaurant. So, in order to construct this sort of structured review summary, one major step is to discover the aspects from the review corpus. And this problem is what we focus on in this work. In previous research, aspect extraction usually consists of two steps. The first step is to extract the uh, aspect terms from the review sentences. Here on the slide shows some example sentences and the uh, relevant aspect terms for each of them. So basically, aspect terms refers to words or word sentences that users tend to express their opinions on. And the next step is to group terms with similar meanings into categories, where each category represents a single aspect. For instance, giving a restaurant review covers, we can group food-related or staff-related or ambience-related terms into separate aspects. An aspect is basically a cluster of similar words or terms, and according to the terms in each aspect, a label could be manually assigned. So here is a high-level system overview of our model. The input is the review corpus from a specific domain. And through aspect extraction, we hope to get a list of aspects. And each aspect could be interpreted by uh, some representative aspect terms. And we also want to associate each aspect a list of sentences extracted from the review corpus, such that a user could know what are the specific comments that other people made regarding to this specific aspect. Under a supervised condition, the major approach to this problem is topic modeling. So basically, topic modeling learns what descriptions over latent topics, such that a topic could be regarded as an aspect, and the top ranked words for each topic could be regarded as uh, the aspect terms. So in this case, we could obtain both uh, aspects and terms uh, without performing extraction and grouping separately. <coughs> Although the property of unsupervised learning is what we preferred, topic models tend to produce aspects of poor quality. One major limitation of conventional topic modeling, uh, topic models such as LDA is that they only uh, rely on the uh, document level or word carbon statistics for learning latent topics and they actually do not explicitly capture the local context of words. And due to this fact, a number of problems could be observed. For example, many topics cannot be interpreted as any readable aspects. And for some aspects, the top run terms are less semantically coherent. And another problem is that topic modeling uh, generally does not uh, work well on short documents due to the data specificity issue. So, in order to deal with those problems and to generate better aspects, uh, in our model, first we make use of distributed representation, so, such that our model could be fit from the knowledge brought, uh, brought by the Christian word vectors. And in this way, we also avoid the data sparsity issue because we do not rely on any document level statistics for learning the word embeddings. And second, we also represent aspects. Uh, as uh, embeddings in the same embedding space as words, such that each aspect could be uh, interpreted by its nearby words in the vector space. And in addition, to improve the coherence of aspect, our model is specifically designed to extract the most relevant information regarding to the aspects and filter out the irrelevant information. And this is done through an attention mechanism and a structure similar to onto encoder which will be introduced later. So what we proposed is a 
uh, is an unsupervised neural attention model. We call it attention-based aspect extraction. Uh, comparing to uh, conventional topic models, that our model is able to uh, generate better aspects, and it is structurally simple. Now let's look at the model structure. The input here is a single sentence, so we map each word in the sentence to a word embedding. The first step is to uh, construct a representation of the input sentence. So this idea is that we want the representation to capture the most relevant information regarding to the aspects. So we compute the sentence vector ZS as a weighted summation of input word embeddings, where the weights are signed by attention mechanism. So basically we help each weight to, to capture the level of semantical association between the word and the traditional aspects. Um, we uh, adapt a relatively simple structure for the attention mechanism. Uh, I will skip the details which you can find in our paper. Then the next step is to apply a dimension reduction on the sentence representation. This is done through a linear transformation with second max activation. And the dimension of the resulting vector PT here equals to the number of aspects, which is a hyperparameter of the model uh, defined by the user. The reason we use self-max activation here is because we want to interpret PT as the probability distribution over aspects, such that as the next step, we could multiply PT with the aspect embedding matrix to reconstruct the sentence representation. Here, each row in the matrix T corresponds to, uh, to, correspond to the vector representation of an aspect. Uh, so what we're doing here is basically we want to reconstruct the sentence representation VS uh, uh, through a weighted summation of uh, aspect embeddings in matrix T. And you can also think of this process as a, a structure similar to a home folder, where the ZS is the input and PT is the canvas vector, and the objective is to reconstruct ZS from PT. The training objective of our model is to uh, minimize the reconstruction error. So the basic idea is just to minimize the cosine distance between the reconstructed vector and the original sense reputation. And for this purpose, we use contrasting max margin objective with negative sampling. You could read the details in our paper. After training, what we can obtain from the model is first the aspect embedding matrix. For each aspect, you can get a, a red list of words according to their percent distance to the aspect embedding. And uh, in this case, an aspect could be interpreted by the top ranked words. And for each input sentence, we can get the vector PT, which represents the probability distribution over aspects for the input sentence. So actually, according to this probability distribution, we can assign an aspect label to the input sentence. And this will be part of our evaluation later in the experiment. We evaluate our model on two data sets. Uh, one is a restaurant corpus, and another one is a very large beer corpus. Each data set has a small number of sentences that are labeled with the gold aspect. And here on the slide, we list the gold aspect label for each data set. Uh, note that our model is trained without any label. So we will only use those label sentences for evaluation later in the experiment. And for experiment settings, we preprocess each radio corporal by uh, removing punctuation symbols, stop words, and word appearing the same 10 times. And we pre-train word embeddings on each radio corpus. And we also initialize the uh, aspect embeddings with the centroids of paintings, uh, have running paintings on the pre-trained pre pre word vectors. In terms of the number of uh, aspects, this is a hyperparameter model. We set it invariably according to the performance of the development set. For the baselines, we first compare with k-means because it also benefits from the operation of vector. And for the top model baselines, we uh, compare with three representative LBA extensions. So these three models are specifically designed for the for our problem, and they have already overcome some of the weakness from the conventional LBA. The first experiment is to evaluate whether the top terms for each aspect is semantically coherent. And we did this through two approaches. 
uh, user evaluation and user topic coherence as a matrix. We did user evaluation with three human judges. Each input aspect is labeled as coherent if the majority of judges agree on it according to the top 50 terms for each input aspect. And in each coherent aspect, uh, um, a term is labeled as co uh, correct if and only if the majority of judges uh, assess that it reflects the relevant aspect. Uh, here we use precision at top n terms as, uh, as a matrix for evaluation. Uh, basically, this matrix indicates the, percent, uh, the, the percentage of top n terms that are semantically coherent. The higher, the better. These two figures here show the average precision at top 20, 13, 15 terms for each data set. As you can see, our model is able to uh, outperform all this time method by large margins. And we also use topic coherence as a matrix to measure the quality uh, objectively. So topic coherence is basically a matrix commonly used when there is no human judge available. So the, risk, the results here uh, are quite similar to those of uh, user evaluation. Still, our model performs the best out of all uh, algorithms. The second experiment uh, here, the objective of the second experiment is different, is to assign each sentence a gold aspect label. For instance, here, this sentence uh, from the review corpus is generally talking about the staff and the service. So the objective of this task is to assign the gold label staff to the sentence. By doing so, we can actually get a list of relevant sentences for each aspect, such that a user could know what are the specific comments that other people made regarding to each aspect. Because our model is unsupervised to do this, first we have to uh, manually map each of the inferred aspect to a gold um, aspect label. This table here presents all um, inferred aspects uh, discovered by our model on the restaurant corpus, where the number of aspects is said to be 14. As you can see that compared with the gold label, the so inferred aspects are more fine grained. So in this case, we have to match, uh, map multiple inferred aspects to the same gold label. For our input sentence, our model will first assign it to, uh, input, to an inferred aspect, which corresponds to the highest weighting PT, as PT represents the probability distribution over aspects of the input sentence. Then a gold label will be assigned based on the mapping from inferred aspects to the gold label. And we evaluate this task on the, based on the label synthesis for each corpus. The uh, evaluation criteria is to judge how well the true uh, the predictions match the true labels. And the results are measured by precision required F scores. Here for reality, we only show the um, macro average F scores, which is computed across all aspects for each data set. For the exact scores of precision required F1 for each aspect, you could refer to our paper. So on the restaurant corpus, in addition to previous baselines, we also compare with the reported results of two other algorithms, including the, be uh, the, the best reported results so far. So on average, our model is able to uh, outperform previous results, uh, previous best results by around 4% on the average F scores. And for this task, we found our model being fixed a lot from the attention mechanism. Here are the attention visualizations for some of the uh, synthesis. Although our model is trained in an unsupervised setting, it's interesting to find that the attention is actually very effective. As you can see, the weights assigned here by the attention model actually corresponds quite well with our intuition. In conclusion, we proposed an unsupervised neural attention model for the problem of aspect extraction. And comparing to top model uh, approach, our model uh, is able to generate better aspects and significantly improves the uh, uh, performance on sentence level aspect identification. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Why? 
uh, focus on the aspect extraction problem instead of the general topic modeling problem. Yeah, but uh, uh, because I start this I start the problem first, then think about the model. But I think you could also extend this model uh, to the general topic model to use for general topic modeling. Yeah. And uh, another question is, find that average and word embedding doesn't work well for large documents. Yeah. Averaging word embedding just doesn't work well for more than a few sentences of text. Did you run into that at all? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. Averaging word embeddings doesn't work well for me. Doesn't work for that way. In our model, we didn't use average word embedding. What? Sorry. What? Well, yes. So from what I understood, you use an attention mechanism on the embeddings. Yeah. And you use the average embedding to score the attention, right? Uh, yes. Right. You and mean this? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and so for uh, more than a sentence or two, maybe a few sentences, uh, averaging. Ford, I've noticed, adds a lot of noise into... Uh, because I think uh, the input to our model is just a single sentence rather than a document. Oh, oh yeah. I see. Yeah, here. Yeah. Oh. yeah, input is just a single review sentence. Oh, okay. All right. Hi, uh, this is a great talk. Uh, I have a quick question on evaluation. So you okay. use the topic coherence and also the the human annotation. Yes. Right? yes. So what if we don't have topic uh, human annotation? For example, if I want to find out the different aspects in the debate, like the debater tends to use uh, different types of evidence to support the claim. We don't have the human annotation. How do we evaluate this result? Uh, uh, so you are talking, you are asking about the first experiment or the second experiment? Yeah, I mean, so. Is there any other good idea of evaluation if we don't have a uh, human annotation? Oh, okay. So, uh, so basically, topic coherence is a common kind of matrix. So yeah. So there's no human judge. Yeah. Um, so I think it's only using the top for coherence, not good enough. Like, um, um, also, you cannot figure out whether the topics are also there's overlap between two topics, right? Yeah, that, that's so, a big problem. Yeah, so is there any other good idea? Um, yeah, I think for, for now, uh, only the topic coherence is uh, coming used, but I'm, I'm not so sure about other approach for evaluating, because answer, the evaluation of answer that's necessary is always a problem. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks for the talk. I have a couple of questions. The first is, uh, so you know you learned your kind of bag of words embeddings weighted by attention uh, in that slide. Have you tried using those sentence embeddings for other tasks like sentence classification and so forth? Uh, that's the first question. Um, yeah. uh, you mean, so you're asking whether I, did I use the sentence representation TS for other? I'm wondering if these sentence representations, if you've tried using them for other tasks, right? So sentence classification, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you want to uh, use this for other tasks, I think you still need to to train it in our uh, in a supervised way instead of just directly use this. Uh, what what you learn from from here? Right, I understand. But have you tried using them as pre-trained vectors, or or that hasn't been done yet? Yeah, that hasn't been. Okay, and then the second question is: Is this code online? Um, um uh, currently no code online. Are you planning on releasing it or not? Uh, uh, because I'm, uh, I was doing this research under SAP, so if we want to uh, publish a code, there's a process to go okay. through that. I understand. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the talk. Just one question about the stop board. Did you run any experiments without removing the stop board? See what's going to happen? Because the annoying thing about LDA is that's always, you know, sometimes when you move from one sentiment test to another, it could be a stop board here, it's not there. I was just wondering, maybe the attention mechanism uh, could have like assigned low weights to the embeddings of the stopwords or something. Did you try any experiments not removing the stopwords? Uh, yes, that's uh, actually a very good question. Because if we, uh, we found an experiment, if we do not remove the stopwords, 
the attention would easily focus on the stop words. And uh, as a result, the uh, learned uh, aspect endings would also be very similar to the stop words. So that's so uh, actually removing the stop words is a very important step okay. for this model. Yeah. And uh, when you remove the stop words, did you pick up like a list of stop words from out there, or did you do it based on frequency or something? Oh, uh, actually, we just use the uh, stop words in an LTK, which is right. uh, yeah, okay. so the basic stop words. Which is Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Let's end.